Good morning, everybody. <coughs> the intention of the Mass is for the people of the parish. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. God the Father anointed his beloved Son, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, and the heavens opened to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear, says to the towns of Judah. Here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arms subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd, feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, and holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother ewes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. Bless the Lord, Bless the my, Lord soul. my soul. Lord, Lord God, God, how great, how great you, are. you are. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe, 
You stretch out the heavens like a tent. Bless the Lord, my soul. So, Lord, Lord God, God how, how great, great you, you are. are. Above the rains, you build your dwelling. You make the clouds your chariot. You walk on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flashing fire your servants. Bless, Bless the, Lord, the Lord, my, my soul. soul. Lord, Lord God, God how, how great, great you are. are. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. There is the sea, vast and wide, with its moving swarms past counting, living things, great and small. Bless, Bless the, Lord, the Lord, my soul. soul. Lord, Lord God, God, how great you are. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open your hand, they have their fill. Bless, Bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. Lord, Lord God, God, how great you are. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Bless, Bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. Lord, Lord God, God, how, how great, great you are. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that we ha what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. When the kindness and love of God our Saviour for mankind were revealed, it was not because he was concerned with any righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion that he saved us by means of the cleansing water of rebirth and by renewing us with the Holy Spirit, which he has so generously poured over us through Christ Jesus, our Saviour. He did this so that we should be justified by his grace to become heirs looking forward to inheriting an eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Hallelujah, mm. hallelujah. Someone is coming, said John, someone greater than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel <coughs> according to Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people who were beginning to think that John might be the Christ. So John declared before them all, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I'm not a fit to undo the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now when all the people had been baptized and while Jesus, after his own baptism, was at prayer, heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily shape like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, my favor rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is our firm Catholic belief that the sacrament of baptism expresses the wonderful gift of God 
by which we are made holy. We become children of God and temples of the Holy Spirit. We must take care, however, not to restrict God's gift to one single moment, the pouring of water, or overlook that part of the sacrament that is our life-giving response to God's gift. Baptism and all sacraments are much more than the moment of celebration. Sacraments neither begin nor end with the liturgical ritual. They exist before, during, and after the celebration. The ritual of baptism does not bring God's love into being as if that love did not exist before the ceremony. Baptism is the church's way of enacting and embrace the embrace of God who first loved us from the moment of our conception. Baptism celebrates a family's and the community's experience of that love in the baptized person. The sacrament is multifaceted as is revealed in the scripture references and the symbols of baptism. Water is the obvious symbol that we associate with baptism, representing life, death, cleansing, and growth. Our initiation process begins with water, just as the time and creation, as portrayed in the very first pages of scripture, also begin with water, chaotic waters, that are put into order by the Spirit hovering over them. The life and death meaning of water continues through the pages of Scripture with the flood water of Noah and the saving waters of the Red Reed Sea parted by Moses. Those waters of the sea, even as they killed the Egyptians, opened a way for the Israelites to pass from slavery to freedom, crossing one more body of water, the River Jordan, to pass into the Promised Land. In the New Testament then, it is appropriate that John the baptizer baptized in the Jordan River, symbolizing that the baptized were also to leave the slavery of sin to the freedom of a new promised land. Nor is it without significance that Jesus began his ministerial journey by being baptized in the Jordan and the Spirit was present. <clears throat> Water and Spirit are strong and important symbols of baptism. To be baptized is to be plunged into the waters and to open oneself to the Spirit of Jesus. To have the Spirit help us make order out of the chaos of a sinful world into which we are born. In baptism we are welcomed into the church, the new promised land, to be nourished there as we journey with each other and with Jesus in his ministry. To be baptized is to be given new birth and new life. It is interesting to note that some of the early baptismal fonts were designed in shapes that were suggestive of the womb to symbolize this aspect of, sacra of the sacrament. The new birth, new life image is related to the darkness and light theme that is also associated with baptism. In birth, we emerge from the darkness of the womb to the bright light of a new world. Some early initiation liturgies had the baptismal candidate turn to the west where the sun sinks into darkness to renounce Satan and then turn to the east, the direction of dawning light to accept Christ. The new life motif of baptism is intimately associated with Christ's passion, death and resurrection and St. Paul reiterates the point in Romans 6, 3 to 4, when he says that when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. We went into the tomb with him so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. Being born is no fun, either for mother or for child. There is waiting, risk, pain, and some trauma. The responsibility of being reborn in baptism also holds pain, suffering, risk, and sometimes trauma in the living out of Christian life. It is not an accident that the baptismal liturgy of the year is the Easter Vigil, the grand celebration of Christ's resurrection. Through baptism we become an Easter people, a spirit-filled community of believers. The giving of a candle lighted from the Pascha candle helps spell out this reality. 
It is also the way that the church, through baptismal sponsors who represent the total community, passes the torch of Christian commitment to those being baptized. Baptism ushers us into a new era. We no longer need be slaves to sin. We put our allegiance with God, who is all good. To symbolize this old and new theme, the ritual of baptism dresses the newly baptized in a white garment. The church continues to insist on the doctrine of original sin and upon the reality of evil in the world, a point clearly echoed in our daily newspapers. The killings, violence, greed, and dishonesty we see mirrored in the media are reminders that all human beings inherit the sinful tendencies and structures passed on to us by previous generations. The grace of baptism can help us counter this. Baptismal candidates are anointed into the mission and ministry of Christ. They are anointed with the oil of catechumens and the chrism of Christ's salvation. Thus, they are strengthened for the lifetime journey of commitment to discipleship with Christ. We have been chosen, marked, and set on our way as a community of followers who support one another in sharing the spirit and mission of Christ. All of this is pretty heady stuff, especially when considered in the light of baptizing babies. The largest percentage of baptisms in our church is still infant baptisms. So what does all this mean for infants? Obviously, infants cannot respond immediately to the call and response aspect of the sacrament, nor can an infant understand the, cha the change of allegiance, the putting off of the old life, or sharing in the life of Christ. The parents of those infants can understand, however, and leave those values and pass them on to their children. The rite of baptism for children emphasizes the importance of faithfulness on the part of parents when it says to them, you have asked to have your children baptized. In doing so, you're accepting the responsibility of training them in the practice of the faith. That word practice is significant. It calls for Christian modeling on the part of parents. It is equally important that the children's sponsors or godparents do the same. They are significant supporters of parents and the ones who can first begin to reveal to their godchildren the value of the Christian community. Children learn to be Christians by osmosis, by experiencing Christianity at home. The domestic church prepares children for the local and world church. It is in the home, in the domestic church, that children first learn the basic trust that is the foundation of faith. Without the experience of faith, hope and commitment in the home, children will not be able to know and understand the larger church. I believe in one God, uh, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today, as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, we are reminded that through our own baptism, we were given wisdom and courage for our journey through life as followers of his teaching. We pray for the grace to continue this journey with hope and perseverance. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously <laughs> hear us. At today's enrollment mass at 11 o'clock, Children of our parish will take the next steps on their journey through life as they begin their preparation for their first forgiveness and first Holy Communion. May they be nourished and sustained by these sacraments as they grow in understanding and recognize the richness that lies in our love and support for one another. We seek your blessings on them, their families and their teachers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our church and our spiritual leaders. We pray for all who face persecution and discrimination for the sake of their faith. May we safeguard our world from those who would seek to undermine the cause of justice and to destroy the moral compass of our lives. Give us and those who govern us the determination to never stop working for a humane and civilized society and the encouragement to change our focus from ourselves to our neighbours. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick and for those who care for them. This is an exhausting time for so many workers who are understaffed and are faced with ever-increasing demands. May they find the necessary energy and resilience to cope with their responsibilities. May they know of our appreciation and gratitude. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that those who have died this week may have eternal rest and that those who mourn will find solace in your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask Mary, Mother of Jesus, to join her prayers with ours as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Let us take a moment to pray in silence for our own intentions. Lord, send forth your Spirit to kindle our hearts so that we may proclaim the good news to our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of, of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you veiled with signs and wonders a new baptism so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a few sacrifices may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting and eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, we take over the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should turn down on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 God bless you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. So the 11 o'clock mass will be the enrollment of uh, our children who will make their first communion in June. On Wednesday, mass is at 2 p.m. It will be a funeral mass for we told Zimanski. Next Sunday, we have a special collection for retired priest funds. The missio calendars for 2022 are available for collection at the back of church. A message from Bishop Mark. It was especially encouraging to hear that there has been greater sense of normality in the celebration of Christmas 2021. I've already been told of a significant increase in numbers in several of our parishes. This Christmas may not have been may not have seen a return to pre-pandemic levels of attendance, yet it has been another step on the long path of our recovery. So the numbers are coming back, you know, gradually. And uh, with the vaccine doing its job, hopefully we'll get more people back into church. The program for the school children's uh, sacraments is there. Little Way Healing Ministry next meeting is on Tuesday, the 18th of January, 7 o'clock to 9 p.m. And COVID arrangements in our church remain the same. Those who need support for bereavement, the contact number is there at the bottom of the page. And please, I got, a, I got a phone call from a parent asking about the, baptis, uh, the f- baptism and first communion of, a, of, a, of the child. And the child, they are from a non-Catholic school. Now, I am expecting the names of children, Catholic children in a, a Lady of Pity, Grisby. And also, if you have a child who is attending a non-Catholic school, please bring the names to me and Carol and I will arrange a separate program for them. They will not interfere with the children of St. Joseph's. So that will be a different arrangement 
So we bring the names and then we can set a, a program for them. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.